Uh, hi, this is Joe again with another review. I know I haven't done a review for a couple of weeks. Uh, took a little time off. And besides, I'm getting a lot of crap from my so called neighbors, so, so that's why I haven't done a review in a while. So too aggravated to do, do a video. <coughs> but I'm doing a review, I, uh, a review now of the show that ends on Sunday night. <coughs> Which was on January 31st, 2016, which was a little show that got decent rings. Uh, it was another one, the so called live production of a Broadway musical, uh, which of course was Grease Live. Now, I'm not going to go into the synopsis of, of the plot because I did that in my review of the Grease movies. So, I suggest you check, check that out. But for, for, the, for the video for, for my review of Grease Live, uh, the whole production, I think anything was, uh, it was okay, but not great. Uh, the problem, and, and there were several problems that I had with this, with, with this production, like it wasn't, with any of these stupid, stupid live shows. Uh, which, which I will get into for my criticism of it. Uh, but, but, but overall, I didn't think it was, all that, all that bad of a show, uh, and what it is toned down uh, because anybody who's ever seen either the original Broadway production of Greece was back in the early 1970s. Uh, I think they, I think it was revived. I think like once or twice it was revived, uh, but and also of course if any of you have seen the movie, which of course I think most people more know more of Greece of the from the movie. Playing John Travolta and Emily Newton John instead of the original Broadway show. But I thought that Beast Live took elements of both sh both versions and put it into this into this movie. Uh, because like I said, most people know Grease because of the movie and still considered one of the more popular uh, musical films in the last uh, 40 years. And, so, and the movie itself is almost 40 years old. Uh, but anyway, going back to Grease Live, you did have some, I would say some pretty good performances. Uh, I don't know who was, who the guy was who played, uh, Danny, who of course was played by John Travolta in the film. Uh, I thought he did a pretty good job. He, he, did, he definitely could sing better than John Travolta can. Though to, John Travolta could not sing a lick, okay? But, but at least I could say that he, that he tried, but wasn't he not not a great singer? Uh, Julian Huff, of course, the more famous for being one uh, dancing with the stars. She played Sandy, and I thought she did a, a pretty good a pretty good job. And of course, there's a complaint complaint with uh, her, which I, which I want to get to in my complaints uh, part. Uh, but I thought, but I thought the best performance of the whole show was Vanessa, Vanessa Hudgens, who played Rizzo, of course with. Of course, it's the slut in the movie. Uh, well, I'm not saying Vanessa, Vanessa Hudgens is a slut. I'm saying the character Rizzo is a slut in the in the film. Uh, because the day before, we slide was on Saturday. Uh, her father unfortunately passed away. I think from, from, I think from cancer. Uh, so she could have easily have pulled out, which we were which we throw the whole production to a tailspin because she. She got cast as Rizzo, but she, but you know the old saying, the show must go on, and, and she did perform on the show, and she gave an unbelievable performance, and I think the best performance of the whole, the whole shebang. And of course, now I want to get into the heavy duty part of it, which is of course the criticisms, which is mo which is mostly going to be focusing on on the on my review of We Life. Most normally, of course, this is my pet peeve that I hate when networks replace, change the ethnicity or the race of characters or the sexual or the gender of characters in television shows. Um, they did it with Battlestar Galactica, they did it uh, in the Battlestar Galactica reboot, they did it with the Hawaii Five-O reboot, uh, which they, which they made characters from a man to a woman, or from black to white, they did this in Greece Life because they took three characters and made them black. 
Uh, most notably, of course, the port of Morty, who was played by a white actress in the movie. In the movie, not only in the movie, but also, of course, in the Port of show, was always characters as white. A, 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 white, a white girl. Here, they had to hire a black girl because otherwise they're going to make a stink with this with this show like blacks have been making a stink with the Oscars. Which, of course, I made a whole video on that, so check that one out as well if you haven't seen it yet. Um, and also, of course, they changed the secretary, which in the movie was played by uh, Donnie or, or Didi Goodman in, in, in the film. And they were also placed by, by a young black woman for that part. And also the part of Coach Calhoun, who of course was famously played by Sid Caesar in the, in the, in the two Grease movies. Uh, he played the part in both Grease films. Uh, and he hired a black actor to play that part as well. So, 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 you, so you play three, three white actors with black, three black actors, which I hate. is a pet peeve of mine. I hate that crap. Uh, of course, the other big criticism is that, that they took both versions of the Broadway and the, mu and the movie version and they combined it. Uh, most of all, they, of course, they had the song Grease, which in the movie was performed by Frankie Valli in the fourth season you know, in the film. It was also written by Barry Gill you know, from, the, uh, from the Bee Gees, uh, wrote the song Grease, and it was performed by, like I said, like I just said, from Frankie Valli. This time they had, and that song was written just for the movie, and recorded just for the movie, for the opening credits. Uh, but in the, naturally of course, the song Grease is more popular than the film, so so they had to have that song in there. Um, the other ver the other uh, problem, of course, I had was there was a problem thing with the bit with Marty, with the Marty character. Uh, she sang the song Creating My Love. Which was in, which was in the Broadway show, uh, but they put that in the the film, the, uh, the, the Grease Life show. They skipped. They didn't have that in the film at all, but they put it in Grease Life, and Morning did this whole thing, and not only that, but she they put it in the backdrop of her performing in a U.S. Soap show. This was a joke, but she uh, is a pen pal for a lot of the Marines who are overseas. And so, and so you oh, there's a line by Rizzo saying you're a one woman USO. So she sings this song, Freddie My Love, in, in a part, in like a USO concert for the troops. Uh, and I know that was a part of the original show because I did not see the original show because it was like a year old when Greece came on Broadway originally. Uh, so, so, they, so they threw that in there. Uh, which I thought, which I thought was a distra complete distraction from the rest of the, rest of the show. Um, the other thing that I have is with the Sandy character. And of course, those who, who know anything, uh, particularly from the movie, the character Sandy Pippen, the original job was supposed to be from Australia. And she comes to California for the summer, spends the entire summer here, and then she's supposed to fly back to, to Australia. And but eventually, her family moved to California. And she gets enrolled in Rydell High School. Well, the character of Sandy, played by Julian Huff, came from Salt Lake City, now from Sydney, Australia. Uh, so, so that's one kind of new thing. I know the I know that's what it was in the original show, uh, but that's what they had. Everybody knows that from, from the movie version. Uh, that this character Sandy is supposed to be Australian. Because he's living in New John is, is Australian uh, by birth. She was born and raised there. So that's why she, she has that accent. Because it's an Australian accent. But uh, but anyway, Julian Huff is not trying to have an Australian accent. He's not trying to perform one uh, or act one. So he said, Oh, I'm from Salt Lake City. That's my government accent. You know, or, you know, or, or whatever the hell skills they use. Uh, so, so that so that was kind 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 of a joke, uh, but also of course there was also a scene where uh, the Thunder Road, which is of course the, the drag race scene, where Rizzo goes to the drag race. And of course, in the movie, Rizzo didn't go. Uh, 
you know, in, in the movie, because Rizzo was played by Stalker Channing in the film, she didn't, she didn't, she didn't go to Thunder Road for, to see the drag race. In Grease Live, she went there, uh, or, or Rizzo went there, and, you know, and then she was nice to Sandy then, at the drag race scene. And of course, she was nice to Sandy just before that, the drag race, in the movie version. Uh, but of course, the, the other uh, major stink that I have with Grease Live is, of course, the non-casting of Carol Demas. Of course, if you've seen my review of the Grease movies, I may just think that Carol Demas had nothing... Did, did NBC, they had a reality show to cast Danny and Sandy for a revival of Grease back in, two, I think it was like 2005, 2005-2006. And, and they dubbed a living room John's the original Sandy and not Carol Demas, and they totally stiffed her out of that. Well, guess what? For Grease Life, Carol Demas got screwed again. Uh, what I mean by that is they did not cast her in any part, and the, they didn't even give her a cameo. They didn't even throw her a bone. Uh, well, that's true. I mean, Carol Demas is over uh, 70 years old. She, I think she's approximately about 74 years old, I think approximately 73, 74 years old. Um, but they could have asked her to play the part of the principal of Rydell, which of course was played by Eve Owen in the, in the movies. But they didn't do that and they didn't throw a boat, but they did cast an original Greece uh, actress to be in this thing, and it was not Carol Demas, but Dee Dee Khan. Of course, those of you, of course, know the movies. Diddy Khan played the part of Frenchie in both Grease movies. Uh, she was, she got cast as V as the waitress in the Mo Shop. They gave they gave her a part, but they couldn't give the part uh, a part to Carol Dean to throw her a bone. Uh, that totally pissed me off to no end because she's the original Sandy in the original Broadway production of Grease back in 1972. Throw a bone for God's sake. I don't know why they can't recognize her as the original Sandy. I don't know what the hell, what the hell, Fox and NBC. I don't know what the hell the problem was. They can't recognize Carol Demas as the original Sandy. I don't, I don't know what the hell, I don't know what the hell they're doing. I mean, I mean seriously. Uh, but, but one thing that didn't make dif difference with, with, uh, you know, Grease Live Show is they had this thing in front of a studio audience, uh, which they didn't have for the other productions for Peanut for The Wiz, Peanut Pan, and Sound of Music uh, on NBC. They didn't have it in front of a studio audience. This show was in front of a studio audience, but uh, for, for you know for, for the most part, uh, I mean it could have been, could have been better. Because if I quit, and if they did the app, you know, did the right thing and put Carol Demas in there, and then have black actors playing white parts, uh, and kept it almost similar to what the movie was, or maybe even similar to what the Broadway show was, uh, then you can do it in either one, and not and not combine both. Uh, because in the Greek slide, they did put in. Like I said before, they did put in the original Grease song, it was in the movie. Plus, they also did two other songs that was also written for the film. Uh, the song was, it was sung by uh, Olivia Newman John, Hopelessly Devoted to You, which became a hit for, for Olivia Newman John, and it played for, for years in, win in winnings, actually. And that song has a dubious distinction according to winning plans. Has, the song that leads the most divorces, so the, and that's the Wang song. I mean, and as you believe in, stu in superstitions. Uh, plus the song, the other song, You're the One That I Want, which was sung by Danny and Sandy in the end of the film. Uh, it was also performed in Feast Live as well. Uh, and those songs were written for the film, and they put those in there, and they did songs, those from the Broadway, the Broadway version, and they put them in here. So they had like a mix of bo both the Broadway version and the movie. But to me, they should have stuck with one version or the other. And not combine both. 
Uh, of course, they also ended out and ended down a lot of the cursing in this thing because there was a lot of cursing in the, in the song. Uh, Look at me, I'm Sandra D. No song of Rizzo. Uh, at the end of the song, he says, "Hey, Fangu," which of course is "fuck you." And in Italian, um, she said she says the word "fangu" at the end of the song. Of course, you can't say that on on uh, network television. You can't say that word, uh, even though it's in, in Italian. It's not not in English. Uh, they edit that out. And also, they add a lot of the other curse words and, and, and sexual and sexually implied lyrics in the Greek and the song for Grease Lightning. Uh, because, because it said the word pussy wagon, and the children getting laid in the car. Um, and of course, also, uh, Danny also said the word ain't, ain't no shit, you know, in, in, that, in, that, in one of the lyrics of the, song, of the Grease Lightning song. Um, so naturally, of course, they have to edit all that stuff out. We have to also edit out a lot of the sexual innuendo, which, of course, they really couldn't edit out everything because some parts are part of the story. But in terms of when Kaniki was making out with Rizzo in, in the car, uh, you know, naturally, they have to have the scene with, with him with the condom. Well, oh, the condom book. Oh, I bought this. Oh, how can I break? It's a, a boy in the seventh grade. So of course, says, oh, what the hell, and they're about to have, about to do it in the car, and of course they were interrupted, but they were interrupted in the movie, in, in the movie version too, uh, but, it's, you know, despite the criticism, it was a better production than The Wiz, uh, not than The Wiz, uh, Peter Pan was, Peter Pan was a god of production that Fox did, this version was not, I mean, it could be better, uh, and also it could be worse too. Uh, if it wasn't for the performances of Julian Huff and uh, Vanessa Hudgens, I believe those two saved, saved this production. Plus, of course, the, the performance by the guy who played Danny, and anything, anything was too bad. But I think Vanessa Hudgens' character up up this thing a little bit, gave it a little more of a positive spin uh, for me, despite all the criticisms I, that I made. So that's my review of Beast Live. Please click on the video, please read it, feel free to comment on Please subscribe to my channel and please forward this video onto your Facebook pages. And you can catch all my videos and not only on my YouTube channel, but also at rallyc.com. It's all WDY and C.com is the homepage of the Rally Reviewer. Please check them out. Uh, not only from my videos, but the other videos on his content, on, on his website, all, all, all that content. Plus all of his TV trash videos, he does a terrific job with, with, with his TV trash videos. Uh, thanks for watching, catch you next time.